It's the third day of Pog Champs, which means that Group D matchups now take place, but none is more intriguing than this one between Mr. Beast and Ludwig. Ludwig called him out on Twitter right beforehand, said he would give him $10,000 if he won, and Mr. Beast right before the show went live said, I'll wager you back 10 grand that I will potentially donate to charity. Mr. Beast! enlisted yours truly for a little bit of pre-match preparation. We used the resource opening tree, which I actually used to prepare against Eric Rosen, and we decided to go with the Scandinavian defense. We studied some of Ludwig's games beforehand, and well, ladies and gentlemen, this video is the result of that preparation. We get E4 and D5. Takes, takes, and what we had take, taken a look at with Mr. Beast was if your queen gets under attack, Bring it out to the side. And actually, Ludwig afterwards said, no one plays this. This is basically the first time he had seen it. According to Opening Tree, there has been one other game, but it was so long ago. You put your queen on the side, and you develop your pieces, and you castle queenside. That is what we had prepared here beforehand with Mr. Beast. We only had about an hour of preparation. Now, Ludwig played this very tentatively. He saw the bishop coming out, and he thought that he was stopping knight to b4. But what he has to realize is that he's playing with the white pieces, so he needs to dictate the pace. Bishop b2 is a perfectly reasonable move, but here castling is probably better than playing a3. There's nothing really wrong with a3, but now after castles, he plays d3. You'll notice that the benefit of playing the Scandinavian defense with the black pieces is that you can open up your lines. This is everything thus far working perfectly. And what I had shown Mr. Beast was to play the move e5. Also, I told him that if white ends up short castling, that you can create some sort of kingside attack because your king is on the other side. Another thing we had looked at is the bishop sneak on the queen. And after knight f6, Ludwig plays knight e4, very tricky move. At first glance, looking like you're blundering upon here, but this is under attack. Now, Beast was thinking here for a long time and I was getting nervous. I was like, does he not see that his queen's under attack? He's calculating all this stuff in the middle. But he played queen d5, bringing the queen back to the middle, teaming up with the rook down this way and hitting the knight this way. So Ludwig takes, takes. And he was thinking for a long time here, he was thinking about the move c4 attacking the queen. He was constantly worrying about e4, which is a great thing that he was worrying about because frankly, if this trade were to happen, the rook opens up and the pressure here is really bad. Ludwig spent a lot of time in this position, ultimately just said, you know what, I'm just going to castle. Now, what is the stock of the opening? Well, in this position, black is a lot better. How do you, but like, how do you know that? Well, in chess, first, we got to take a look at material, completely equal. Second, we got to take a look at king safety. And as you're about to see from Mr. Beast's next move, uh, White's king is hardly safe, whereas the Black king is very safe. White also has very bad development. These pieces are in a bit of a rectangle, which is why for Ludwig, he has to go back to the drawing board, and that is how you learn in chess. Now Ludwig needs a better weapon against the Scandinavian defense. He needs to play something a little bit more center controlling. But in this position, Ludwig is very passive. All his pieces are, are back. He doesn't control a lot of the enemy squares, whereas uh, Mr. Beast is very active. And he plays the move rook g8 and here's what the commentators had to say about it i'm really really not liking this this time consumption and he's done rook g8 but look at him go that is really impressive danny dude seriously right he's playing all the natural moves so shout out to whatever kind of secret training uh jimmy's been getting on on the side so obviously you look at rook g8 and you go well i mean it's a logical move he's lining up his rook to pressure the kid right but Mr. Beast spotted that completely on his own. This was still an idea within the bounds of our preparation. I had told him that one of the ideas is to open the G line, sacrificing the pawn sometimes, just to have a direct line of attack. Ludwig reacts correctly, plays the move G3. Why is this good? We're often taught not to push pawns where we're being attacked. Well, Ludwig is realizing that this is a really difficult pawn to break through. If he ever needs the knight to come here to block the H pawn from moving down the board, it's all good. And here, Mr. Beast plays the move E4, which is a fantastic move. This is an excellent move. And the point is that if you take, the bishop takes, and now you've got the double line drive on the knight, and if the knight moves, your queen and rook hit this. Black makes a pawn break advantageously opening the position with e4. Ludwig strikes with c4. So he plays a move that counterattacks something of more value. Now at this point, what Mr. Beast should do is get his queen out of danger, which he absolutely does. Queen c5 is a great move, but queen d6 or queen d7 would have been better. The reason why is that here, the queen is still a target. And as you'll notice through a lot of my Pongchamps videos, I'm constantly making you guys think, how can they attack us? 
And as long as your queen is still a target, you don't want that. You don't want your queen in the line of sight of your opponent. If you go all the way back, you still maintain this pressure just from a distance. And this is still great for, for, uh, for black. Mr. Beast goes queen c5, now we get bishop e3. And the crazy thing is that here, Ludwig saw that when you attack the queen, there is a wicked capture sequence black can uncork. Look at this. It's called a capture chain. Black can play pawn takes knight. White takes the queen. And now rather than taking this, you take the bishop, attacking the queen and the rook. So white has to respond to that. And now black gets bishop, bishop, knight for a queen. And black is still winning. Say, why is black winning? White is up a point. King safety and peace activity. That is how you evaluate who has a better position. Black is dominating here with the pieces. Black is going to go knight d4, bishop h3, bishop g4, and drop in the knight, and then just march the pawn down the board and shred open that king's defense. Yes, there is a lot more chess to be played, but black is better. And Ludwig saw that. That's the craziest thing. He was drawing the arrows on his own monitor. But Mr. Beast miscalculated. He flipped the move order, and he did this instead. And the difference here is that he takes the bishop first, and gets the knight. Objectively speaking, that's six for nine. That, that should be like not so bad, but Ludwig from here takes the pawn, and then I didn't fully bless this move, but he plays rook takes bishop. Of course the rook is better than the bishop, and if you're gonna sacrifice for anybody, you should sacrifice for this because the king gets opened up. But he's simplifying. That is his idea. He's removing one of black's most active pieces, and then he's going for further simplification with the knight. We get bishop g7, bishop c6, Mr. Beast takes on b2. Of course, he should take the bishop on c6, but okay, he took on b2. Look at this savage move by Ludwig. This shows how classy of a player he has become. Queen to b1. This is so evil. If you take the rook, the queen travels down the board, and it's mate. I mean, Ludwig is a savage for playing the move queen to b1, but Mr. Beast, to his credit, doesn't even bite. He sees it. It's never too late in the game to do something, but Ludwig sacrifices and then picks up the bishop. And what I meant to say was never too late to do something bad. But look at Ludwig. Look at this. Queen to b8. As Hikaru said yesterday, uh, Rubius missed queen b8, but, but Ludwig sees it. Picks up the rook and then watch. Watch this. Check. Look at this. Check. Baiting the king forward. Check. Baiting it forward again. And rook d1. King e7. Look at this. Queen g5. He baited the king into a spot. It would be close to the rook. This is so important for all of you to remember that the queen with the king and the rook so distant. There is that checking opportunity. And Mr. Beast resigns on move 31. What a game. I got to give a lot of respect to my protege, uh, Mr. King of YouTube himself, who played everything. He played everything we prepared to the T. And... His mistake was getting a bit low on time. By this point, out of a 10-minute game, he has about two and a half minutes. He's very tentative. So don't put your queen where it can be a target. Bring your queen all the way back, but bring the queen back when it's actually under attack. So bring it back. Yes, you have this really fancy schmancy, but just bring it back. And you are still defending. This is pinning. And the real lesson I want to show you here is like, let's say you brought this back and then white played like knight d2. I'm going to flip the board just so we have an understanding of how exactly black would play this position from here on out. Like, what does it mean to get an opening advantage? And then how do you capitalize? Well, we know that the idea for black is going to be attacking white's king, right? So let's say rather than even the move e4 in this position, for example, black can play bishop to h3. This is always going to be a useful move. The rook will slide over, you think, all right, so what? And now... We know we need to get to this position with our pawns. Bring the bishop supporting the pawn storm with the rook. This could get very bad very quickly. You know, even if c4, queen d7 happens, for example. Like, let's say you give a move like this. f4 is coming. Once f4 comes, this pawn is going to get taken, right? Once that pawn is taken, the bishop comes out pressuring the other pawn near the king. Soon you will have queen, bishop, rook and other bishop, maybe you will double your rooks. You're going to have five attacking pieces. So you need to focus on that side rather than breaking in the center. The movie he played in the center was good, but when you have a game plan out of an opening, 
That is what you try to do. A lot of you ask me to make middle game videos. Your middle game plans flow from the kind of positions that you get from the opening. Your opening should be consistent. Now what Mr. Beast has to do is get this position 50 more times and get that game flow. So the first time he played this, he learned this an hour before game time and he did a pretty damn good job. So on that note, we're gonna take a look at his second game. We prepared the Queen's Gambit with d4, d5, c4 iconic because Mr. Beast definitely watched the Queen's Gambit. It's what kind of reinvigorated his love for chess that he played when he was younger, like many of you watching potentially. And Ludwig plays knight f6, which is actually already a big inaccuracy. You say, Levy, what are you talking about? Well, the Queen's Gambit can be declined in a variety of ways, like for example, e6, c6, but black has to decline it with a pawn. Why? Because if white takes, you take back with a pawn. Black needs pawn presence in the center to occupy squares and then develop the pieces behind it. The way Ludwig plays this, and the way a lot of people actually play this after knight f6, white can take. Oh, you say, all right, queen d5, knight c3, I just moved my, you just showed me this in the last game, Levy. No, I didn't. The Scandinavian defense is played after e4, d5, takes, takes. There is no e pawn in the Scandinavian defense. The difference with c4, knight f6 is that if you take, take, Knight c3, queen a5, there is an e pawn! You still have two of your center pawns. This is not a Scandinavian defense. This is good for white. Just don't go here so quickly, because they'll take, and you're pinned. But this is not a Scandinavian defense at all, and if they take with their knight, you attack it, and then when they go back, you just, you go here, you still got the two center pawns. White is much better. So that is why black has to defend with a pawn, and actually this whole game, black didn't. Now we're in what's called a Chigorin defense. Those of you that want like a secret opening repertoire against the Queen's Gambit. And what I had shown Mr. Beast is that if Ludwig plays Bishop F5 and Knight C6, I didn't want Mr. Beast to get hit with a reverse fried liver. I didn't want him to get hit with Knight B4 uh, and, uh, and Knight C2. So I showed him just play A3. Just be solid. Play the move A3. You never have to worry about any of that stuff. Objectively speaking, the best move for white in these positions with Queen's Gambit when the, when the Queen is open to B3 and the Bishop has moved is to take and play queen b3. And this is almost winning for white already. You say, well, how's that possible? I just moved my knight back and you can't take me. Yeah, but I got e4. And then when you move, I got d5. And it's over. You just get completely overrun in the center. Black needs central pawn presence again. So the queen's gambit, when the bishop comes out so early, I just, I, I stayed away from a recommendation like this uh, for Mr. Beast, or at least you know, taking knight d5 and then queen b3 is because it's too much to memorize. I wanted him in the one hour that he had with me right before his match, get a very simple, easy to play position and avoid traps. And he did that. A3, e6, he got his bishop out, which was great. A6, e3. Perfect. Perfect. I mean, I can't ask for any better. But Ludwig messed up the game plan here by playing the move knight to e4. There is nothing wrong with the move knight to e4. In fact, taking it is more than okay. But white has to finish development. That is the problem. Is that once you see your opponent, you know, it's like kids in an arcade. You see one kid yelling at his parents for more tickets. You're like, maybe I have a chance now. Let me yell at my parents, right? You see a bad example, you start doing it. Ludwig was the bad example. Mr. Beast should have stuck to what he knew. Finishing his development. And then if takes, takes just castle. Smooth. And then the rest of the game in the Queen's Gambit, you open up the C file, you put your rook there, and you advance, and you, 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 but Ludwig did it, so he did it too. He did the same thing, we got a trade, and then Ludwig played bishop d6. Now, I don't know if Ludwig is like the, the most evil of geniuses, or if he just straight up blundered upon, but he allowed Mr. Beast to take on g7, which looks like a good move, but just like in the last game, Black has activated their rook. The only thing White has is a bishop. It's just a bishop. The bishop has to get back, and the problem is, if you like just leave it out here, black is gonna start coming in. Black has one, two, three, four pieces playing, maybe long castle, activate a fifth piece. All of white's pieces are on the back row. And I did give Mr. Beast this warning. I was like, don't fight until everyone's ready. Don't just, don't just go. You can't play a basketball game five on three. You gotta get everybody in the game. But when you see a guy do it, it throws you off and, and he adapted to that game plan. And then here he played the move f3. And the reason why this is a, a, a mistake is because yes, rook takes g7, there is this. But the problem is that you have to scan for checks. It's not that this move is going to happen. That's actually the least of your concerns. Can my opponent attack my king? And there is a tactical pattern here, which Ludwig sees just on immediately. 
And believe it or not, Black, White's best move here is to run the king. Run the king and try to hide in this kind of like bush of pawns. Just, oh, he's not going to find me if I'm in here. But the problem is that G3 and Ludwig is too experienced of a player. He knows this tactical trick. Pawn, rook is pinned. Bishop takes G3, takes, and queen takes H1. Black has now infiltrated. This is bad news. It is still not over. White can still move the queen and castle the king. For example, the best move here might be queen B3. Go on a counterattack. Black's best move is to castle and defend. But what if black doesn't do that? Like, what if black takes with the pawn and all of a sudden, whoa, we're back in the game. And then when the rook moves, you can castle long, right? Now you're totally back in the game. So it's never too late. But the problem is sometimes lower rated players and the underdog in the matchup gets flustered. They're like, damn, all right, well, you know, it's done. All right, I made my mistake. All right. And you just take things. And then look at Ludwig it just doesn't take his foot off the gas. He doesn't auto take back. A lot of us would go snap, 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 snap. Same. He pauses. He goes, my queen just took this. If my queen goes here, I hit everybody. Mr. Beast plays pawn takes. I mean, he's just, he's goblin. And again, Ludwig just doesn't even, it's the queen. The queen does the most damage. And then look at this. Bishop to e2. He takes again with check. If king f1, there is mate. So to Mr. Beast's credit, he actually moves his king to safety. Check. And Ludwig just, again, just won't, he won't, he won't stop. Rook g1. And you, you know, some of you watch these videos and you're like 1300, 14, you're stronger than the players. You're like, why are you celebrating these moves, Gotham? You're so stupid. I mean, like 80%, I don't know, 70%, 80% of people watch this. Ludwig played a fantastic game. I mean, he just, I can't give him enough credit. The one question I have is, on when he played bishop to d6 way earlier, if that was a strategic sacrifice to activate his rook, because if it was, that was brilliant. The most brilliant thing I've ever seen an 1100 do, ever. If he blundered it, well, then, you know, beautiful accidents happen. Just look at me. And so rook g8, and black just gets this wave of play. And what Mr. Beast had to do is not go to war so quickly and not open up the lines. You've only got one piece playing. So sometimes taking a pawn with an attack on the rook is a bad move. You take a pawn and you attack the rook and it's bad. What you should have done is stabilize your position and not let your opponent be so active. And the rest of the game, Ludwig converted it beautifully. I mean, what more to say? King d2, rook g1, he takes, he takes. I think here he might have had a faster mate, just slightly, but he takes. And it's the same situation as last game. And there it is. Two games in a row, he doesn't let his queen do all the work. He activates the rook. He brings in the rook, and he just he just cleans. I mean, just the... I got nothing to say. I have nothing to say. I mean, I'm, I'm very proud of, of, of the way Mr. Beast handled this, given the hour of preparation that he had. But congratulations, Ludwig. Two fantastic played games, and hopefully, uh, hopefully you all learned from these games with the Queen's Gambit and the Scandinavian defense and the two kind of best ways and meta ways to play them. Hopefully you got some new opening inspiration. And uh, here is Mr. Beast uh, mildly officially leaking that we did a little bit of work together. But yeah, you can like get to this part. And I asked like uh, Gotham, I was like, is, is this good for me? And he's like, yeah, this is a good position. And so I was like, all right, I made it my objective just to get this board right here. So obviously very cool once again to see a matchup of this caliber with such amazing creators. I am going to be making videos like this hopefully every day of PogChamps with kind of the marquee matchup. Once again, I cannot thank those of you enough who are just being positive, embracing this event. Uh, a couple days ago, we, like I said, were the number one game on Twitch, 370,000 viewers between three channels. Chess is exploding like it never has before. So I'll be here every day. I'll be making the content and... Uh, Hopefully you're going to be enjoying it. Take care.